what you can see here is that there's these multi rings, which are gabbro, which is the intrusive equivalent of basalt. So basalt comes out of the ground and, and spreads out in the atmosphere, right? Gabbro is the, and that's an extrusive rock. Gabbro is an intrusive rock, but in other words, if the same magma comes up, but it doesn't breach the surface and flow out as basalt, crystallizes underground, that's typically, so gabbro or gabbroic rocks are the intrusive equivalent of, of, of basalts, right? And that's what you've got here. These are basically- Like granite or is, is, is that something well, else? Well, granite is an intrusive because granite again is, is forms, excuse me, under, under the ground. Like okay. you can have granite, the, the magmas that form granite can, can flow out in, in, of course, granites tend to one side of the, the geochemical spectrum more towards the, um, the silicate rocks okay. rather than the, the right. And, and a lot has to do with the, the, the chemical composition of the rocks, what kind of uh, magmas are formed. And of course, that is oftentimes how you identify the, the distinct types of magma. Because for example, here in these layers, You've got, let's see, I might have a better one here. Um, let's get to this. Okay, wow. so in this cross section of the structure, you can see that the dots are sandstones and then the sort of the, the little block diagram here, these are limestones and then there's more sandstones and these are really old rocks. They, I mean, they go back, you know, hundreds of millions of years. But so basically what you've got is you've got this structure you've got the, the gray areas the magma welling up from below you've got these pre-existing as it said earlier pre-existing structural weaknesses which to me okay possibly two explanations one would be that the pressures from below are great enough and probably through tectonic processes there have been fractures but it's a fairly flat lying uh, basin they're called the Taudeni basin that this that the, the recat structure is found in and so are the pressures from below enough to cause the fracturing of the bedrock that then allows the extrusion of the magmas? Or conversely, was there an impact that actually was able to cause the fractures? And once you had the cracks within this, within this lid, this uh, rock lid that's holding everything down, it's now free to well up and, and come out. Um, We'll leave that question for now. The point is, is that there were weaknesses within these the overlying bedrock that allowed this magma to come up and, and flow out. And, you know, we've got different kinds. It's, it's talking about, um, um, here you can see these little cross sections represent each one of these plumes then becomes a volcano, right? right. And so you've got, these are basaltic magmas down below. Um, and let's see, anything? We'll go to the next one. And so what you're seeing here is that the, the magmas have gone through some, some hydrothermal changes and some chemical changes forming uh, rhyolitic magmas. We're seeing that the overlying structure, as the magma wells out, the overlying structure is falling, essentially dropping down into the, cha the magma chamber that is now being voided of of the magma see yeah. so as the pressure below is 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 easing up it's allowing the rock masses above to essentially subside into into the magma chamber these arrows here show that the hydrothermal fluid so there was water involved in this which leaves a very characteristic fingerprint in the type of metamorphism that you see in the rocks and so as these magmas pass through the overlying rocks they will pick up the, the geochemical characteristics of these rocks and so that is one of the ways that allows petrologists to identify or volcanologists to, to identify the source of various rocks because uh, an event like this in, in, in Mauritania is not going to have the same geochemical signature as in a similar event in eastern Washington. And, and see, so you've got quartzitic uh, sandstones um, and you've got these limestones. The limestones go back, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think they're Ordovician. So, I mean, they're, they're old. Um, right. 600, 600 million years old. So there was, a, there was a lot of material over this that was removed to expose this thing. And here you can see further uh, collapse of the structure in the beginning of the formation of the rings. And here in the middle, you have this, what's called, the, what they're referring to as the hydrothermal breccia. So you've got this 
tremendous mass at the very center of this thing, you've got this tremendous mass of brecciated rocks, right? The matrix that they're enclosed in is the cement is, was formed hydrothermally. So in other words, you're looking at this mass of stuff full of broken rock, all cemented together. And the cement uh, was emplaced by highly mineralized flowing water. If you look at these, like if you look at this, you can see the, um, the arrow is pointing. This is a, a, an offset fault where you're seeing, or a strike slip fault. Yeah. Right. You see that mm -hmm. moving. And that, those shear forces are tremendous and they can cause metamorphism. And so then the overlying rock has now been eroded away, kind of leaving a cross section of what the structure looks like now. And you can see here, as you're looking at it, how it's been domed up. Right. Been domed I was going to say in the previous one, it looked like it was, it was ramping down and now it's, now it's a dome structure. Now it's a dome structure. And you can see, away. And, yeah. right. And you can see these layers of rock are dipping or tilting outwards because right. they've done this, see, forming what are called cuestas. So the question marks, that's, that's basically saying we don't know how deep the magma chamber is beneath it. Is that correct? Okay. Correct. So if we go back to here, here's a nice block colored block diagram kind of showing the same thing. We see the magma chamber underneath. You see the conduits to the surface, mm. how they coincide with the gabbroic rings. So this would have solidified under the surface of the ground. Okay. And only later than when the overlying rock layers are stripped away, are you going to see the underlying ring structure. <laughs> there's a fault system, like for example, right here, you see there's a fault and offsetting in the rings. Yeah. And that's undoubtedly due to the, to the uplift and you see, uh, you've got, as it says here, magmatic phases. So you've got the basaltic magma, which is the gray. And then you've got the felsic magna, magma, which is crosses, which is curious because you've got this Weird. mixture of these very highly contrasting types of, of magma associated with each other. External basaltic ring dike is displaced by a north, northeast, south, southwest fault system in the northeastern part of the structure. That's this right here that it's referring to. It's cross cut by carbonatite dikes in southern and western se sectors, which are the oblique crosses. Um, the slashes up there on the. Yeah, there they are. Yeah. Okay. And then you've got right here, this is a small volcano, volcano sedimentary basin outcrop, which probably at one time held a lake. Uh, okay. Here is a magnetic survey of the recat structure uh, where you see the ring dike and you see that this, this ring has been breached here on the southwest. It's calling it a Mars system displacement of ring dike by fault. So Mars system probably held a lake okay. at one time. And in fact, this whole thing may have at one time held a lake because there are, there are uh, endother endothreic streams that flow into it, which means that the, the streams flowing into it basically just dissipate within the structure. And it's along these stream beds that the Acheulean uh, artifacts were found, which, you know, go back to maybe Homo habilis up to about a million years ago, maybe up to a million and a half years ago. From 200,000 back to about a million and a half years ago, there was stone tools collecting along oh, here. Like unifacials found along there? Uh, mostly, uh, uh, what do they call them? Hand, like hand axes that are oh, about, this, yeah, wow. that's mo mostly what they were because there are chert outcrops in this thing. And chert was a very good, it's a conchoic, yeah. fractures conchoidally. So it's very effective for making uh, stone implements and tools. So there were chert outcrops in this structure that, that were being quarried by somebody hundreds of thousands of years ago. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Um, Wow. So that's really cool. This this image <laughs> this image well yeah here you can see the ring and this is this is the mega breccia outcrop at the center which is right at the center of the structure. And here's an example of a piece ah. of the mega mega breccia. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty substantial. Yeah. God, it's beautiful though. It's just a gorgeous. Oh, it really is. Yeah. Although this is, this is a false color. It's nonetheless, but there are a lot of interesting little things when you look around, like, look at this thing up here. Is that, that what structure? Yeah. Is that what that thing was calling a plug? The one of your previous, the magnetic 
uh, map you had? It was saying there was a plug up there. No, the Maybe plug. No. Uh, let's see. Plug's which show? Yeah, it's down here. You can see the the cliffs are about six hundred feet high. Wow. So if, wow. if if there was enough water, it would be a lake. Yeah. Or would it drain out down? It would drain out this way. Okay. And in fact, it, I'll show you in a minute. It looks like there was evidence for extreme floods over this whole landscape. Definitely. Look at this. Look at this down here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So the Acheulean artifacts are found along the stream bed. You can see here's a, there's a wadi up here that flows in, forms this ephemeral stream that basically just dissipates. Same thing here. So an endorheic, endorheic stream is one that doesn't flow to a greater body of water or to the ocean, ultimately, or to, to a river. It just basically disappears. Like it, like it's, it, 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 the water disappears underground? Is that the idea? Or it, ends like up it could be that, or it just, you know, it, it, it's in a dry basin, and it eventually just evaporates. The water flows enough to, yeah, it just evaporates. I mean, you okay. see that happening, for example, in Death Valley, or you see it out in the Mojave Desert. Brad and I have looked at, at, at a number of those kinds of, of streams. And here is when you get up here to the edge of the, of the erosional, uh, here you see this kind of stuff, which is very interesting. You see what actually looks like recessional cataracts. Yeah. So the That's stripping and, and exposure of this feature may have involved catastrophism. Hmm. And uh, tell you what we'll do here is What's the scale of the structure itself? Like, how big is this thing? What are we looking at in terms of miles? Well, let's see. It's generally given as 38 kilometers. So we'll go 38 times 0. 0.62, which makes it about 23 to 24 miles in diameter. Okay. So it's, it's pretty good sized. Pretty um, big, yeah. Which is way bigger than the city plan for Atlantis that people are trying well, to compare it to. Brad, we'll get, get to it. that, Brad. Brad. Well, <laughs> Brad. We'll get to that, okay. 